Hello everyone and welcome back guys to Forza Motorsport 7. Yeah, we're finally back today on Forza. I felt, you know, it was only time that I got back on to this game. You know, quite looking forward to getting back onto this. And today we're here for the very first round of the Delta Online Racing Lamborghini Super Trofeo Cup. Now, this car I'm quite a big fan of. You know, I've always been quite a fan of Lamborghinis. As well as there was the added incentive for this series of we are actually racing for cash. Now, there are so I'll explain the way... This works. Basically, there is a European series and a rest of the world series, obviously mainly Americans. Uh, the winner of each of those wins $100. And then there is a big final where the top eight from each go into one final race. The winner takes home $500, second place $200, and third place $100. So overall, there is a $1,000 prize pool for this. I don't think there's ever really been anything like this in Forza, apart from obviously the RC competitions as well. You know, coming into this... I wasn't feeling all too confident, in all honesty. Uh, I hadn't been able to do much practice over the last couple of days before going into this. But those of you who have obviously been keeping up with the channel, I've, I cannot get Wi-Fi on my Xbox at home, unfortunately. There was a big update that came out on Forza, which completely changed the way the handling model worked and everything like that as well. Which basically meant that yeah, I went into this with about 10 laps of practice on like the new handling model and all things like that. So not ideal for myself overall as well. Ignore what's going on in the background currently on your screens. I was being... I forgot I had trigger stops on. On my Xbox controller, so could not get the car slowed down whatsoever there. But yeah, a little bit unfortunate about that one. But yeah, for this one, basically, I started in P6. This is unfortunately having to be done by the replay cameras. I actually went up my grandparents to race. Luckily, on Forza, there is a save replay feature, which is obviously really, really ideal, which meant that obviously I can still record everything from, you know, sort of after the race. It also gives me a good chance to sort of show you guys some different camera angles as well, which is, you know, really, really cool. And also probably helps to explain as to why this race is 20 minutes long. We're basically going to show the full race overall, mainly from my POV, but also a little bit from everyone else's as well. But I think we're almost ready then to get going for the very opening round of the Delta Online Racing Lamborghini Super Trofeo Cup. And it's lights out and away we go there. And I think that's a Aerox Chris not getting off to a good start there. That's going to leave myself and AMR Lawrence straight past him there. We're going to make it three wide as we come in towards turn one there, but I get a much better run than the pair of them there. And that's me straight up now into P5 from P7 on the grid there. Chris tries to dive it back down the inside there, but cannot make it where we get a much better run on the exit of the corner here. And there are there are certainly some high-profile names in this series. Uh, Williams Roadrunner, obviously a racer for Williams Esports. Uh, obviously the Porsche Forza RC 2017, I think season three world champion uh you've got tobin obviously f8 uh, sorry not f8 races veloce races even i should say obviously on veloce as well a very very big team now in esports ranked with inside the top uh, i think he really, no he just missed out in the world finals in the end he got a little bit robbed from bs penalties but i think the less said about that the better there but yeah he's like top 15 in the world balkit as well uh aerox balkit he's probably sort of ranked top 20 in the world as well and obviously that is just including the weird sort of bias towards americans as well there. And between me and them was also my teammate iWolves as well. Someone that I used to race with in EVR as well. And obviously a good mate that I've known for a very, very long time as well here. So excited to be racing with him once more. We would be representing Team M25 Traffic Jam. A bit of a meme between myself, him and one of our fellow good mates as well, Matt Gaming. As it's going to be a little bit difficult the fact there's two, two mats in this. But yeah, we've obviously got myself and Matt Gaming 6661. As well, which is obviously really exciting here. As we come through the kink on Road America on lap one. Now, Wolves, it's going to be a key story for a lot of this evening there. You just cannot get that corner right. They're very, very unfortunate to hit a huge mistake. And that now moves me up straight away into P4 of this race by the end of lap one. The race formats are roughly about 20 minute sprint races. Overall, there's two races a night. The first race, obviously, from qualifying order. And the second race is reverse grid as well. Obviously, this is top split, as you've come to expect, with x fours or RC champions. And, you know, sort of very, very top ranked guys in the world as well and yeah as i said this was my first genuinely my first race back on forza in i think three months uh since frc which i think ended in about august so yeah about three months since i last did any forza racing so quite looking forward to get into this one as well i'm sort of gonna have the telemetry up in the background as well let me know what you guys think i sort of want to try and you know where i've recorded this first race in very different style i do sort of want to try and utilize it as best as possible most likely for future races i will go back to the normal editing style you know it's a lot easier for me uh, overall as well you know i don't have to go back and re-watch 20 minutes of racing as we now sort of record it live whilst it's going on as well you know it's, it's nice to have a bit of a change up of style here and there as well but yeah just in front of me we have got balkit and races having a big score whilst roadrunner is really starting to struggle 
to get away from these guys as well. It's sort of weird, you know, get back into Forza. I forgot quite a few of the key characteristics of the game, you know, the way battling works and everything like that. It is, it's, it's not backwards, but it's very different to anything else. Obviously, I drive at the moment. Obviously, recently, the main focus has obviously been F1 2018 and, you know, a fair bit of race room as well on the side of that. Um, yeah, now the, now the race room uh, World TCR comp is over. I think I ranked 63rd in the end, which I'll certainly take considering I only obviously entered halfway through as well. So yeah, we can, we can focus on some different titles as well over winter. You know, I am really considering getting back into Forza after these couple of races last night, you know, trying to do a few more series here and there. I do have exciting news as well coming out in the next couple of weeks here. But yeah, at the moment, I'm sort of just filling this with Waffle whilst Wolves suddenly gets right up to my rear end here. We're going to have a go on board with Wolves as we come now through the kink once more there. And he just cannot get the car turned in. If you have a look, obviously, from my POV, and what it obviously it's it's very easy to just be a backseat sort of driver coach here, and obviously I wouldn't want to do that. Wolves is a better driver than me. There is no denying that on this game there. But yeah, he really just struggled to get the car turned in, and that was really sort of skating the rear end out on that Lambo there, which is very, very unfortunate for him. This car, wonderful to drive until it starts sliding, and then it's just absolutely hideous. It it's one of those horrible cars where it's not that difficult to control, but when you get it wrong, it just loses you so much time, which is really, really frustrating. On the whole, but as I'm going on about this, racers seem to have a good run on a Bowkit here up the long front straight here to start. I think that three of this race here is he going to be able to have a look up the inside in towards someone here? Slipstream doesn't really have much of an effect on obviously Falls Motorsport as well. For those of you guys that have sort of followed this game for many years, the whole races into the back of Roadrunner there and Bowkit as well get a little bit caught up in that one. Lucky he was able to hold on to P2 after all of that little bit of action. As well, but yeah, Roadrunner saying in this race, you know, he felt he was probably breaking a little bit early, but it was sort of one of those psychological things on Forza, where the guy in the lead, you can't afford to take risks like that. So everyone else, obviously, behind is trying to battle. It's obviously inevitable that a couple of people might run into each other, you know, at some stages of this race. But yeah, for me, I was just trying to keep up with this group. You know, I was slowly but surely bringing myself back into this fight at the very front here. You know, not really saying, you know, I quite had the pace to match these guys, but you know, I definitely. Well, theoretically, you know, I was right there. I did actually end up in this first race with the fastest half. I was the only guy to sneak into the 205s as well, which I'll certainly take at the end of the day here. But yeah, mainly I was sort of hanging on to these guys' coattails, you know, through the fact that obviously they were having quite an intense battle as well. Very, very enjoyable to watch from behind as well, you know, just slowly but surely closing back up and thinking, oh my god, I'm actually keeping up with some of these brilliant, brilliant races overall as well. I mean, obviously, just not, not too much fan girling whatsoever there. But yeah, we were just trying to keep up with these guys at the moment. You know, if, if they had a mistake, I wanted to be close enough where I could pounce, but I also didn't want to be... Get, be it was one of those horrible situations where you don't want to be too close and get wrapped up in it, but you also don't want to be too far back, so if there is a little small error, you can't try to pounce on it. But, you know, these guys are so ferociously quick anyway. Dirty air isn't much of an effect on this game. You don't lose all too much time, usually, depending on, obviously, the way you do fight. You, you know, you can get away with quite a lot of action and not lose out on too much time, and especially a track like Road America, there are so many opportunities to go side by side as well, which you know, was really, really exciting to see there through the final couple of quarters. Just look, racers, how we could get that line consistently through both the kink and the penultimate corner, I will never know. It was just, honestly, it just amazes me. Some of the guys, you know, you can tell the difference between, like, a top, top driver and, like, me, who I'd like to think now I'm sort of top 1-2% in the world. Obviously, we consider how many moves there are on this game. You know, I like to think I'm sort of within that top 1% overall. It really does go to show, you know, the difference. You know, although I might, you know, I might feel that like I'm pretty good at this game, it does go to show how big the difference is between being quite good and being one of the very best as well. Which obviously really, really, you know, why I wanted to get back into this, you know, this league seems really, really competitive. It means that I've got a good opportunity to fight with some very, very quick races as well. You know, as I said, it was a bit of a meme team organized for us as well but you know we did put a little bit of practice in you know we sorted out what felt like quite a decent tune as well so we certainly felt quite confident moving into this as well which is obviously the most important thing as well but yeah you know we, we sort of just went into this for a bit of fun but it's certainly well i can say after the opening two rounds it's certainly been very very enjoyable there bulk it running into the back of road running there and this is going to give racers an opportunity up the inside of Bowkit here, up in towards turn 7, I think it is. The, num the corner numbers are really weird around here. And yeah, Racers now moves himself up into P2 of this race ahead of Bowkit. But I'm slowly but surely still closing in on this group. I just lacked a little bit of consistency. Obviously, the muscle memory still wasn't quite there. Coming back into Forza, you know, the nerves are there as well. You know, I'm trying to keep up with some very, very quick drivers as well. So, you know, I wasn't quite 
at my perfect pace, but, you know, perfect potential. But I was still, you know, feeling quite confident, you know, being P4 in my first race back. When you consider the caliber of drivers, you know, a lot of these guys do play fours are a heck of a lot, like, a heck of a lot more than me, you know, to be able to jump in and be somewhat there, you know, with some very big teams, you know, Aerox, Veloce, Williams, uh, GTR as well, obviously another team that have had a huge amount of investment with Legion. You know, it felt good. It felt quite funny that, you know, the M25 meme team was just here and just trying to remain relevant in these races as well. It's obviously really, really funny as well. It just goes to show, you know, you don't need all of that organisation and everything like that to still have a bit of fun and remain competitive on Forza. As obviously, we, we were effectively privateers in this race. But yeah, at the moment, we're just trying to watch out for this battle in front of me, you know, trying to look for any opportunities that do arise. But, you know, Balkit and Race is still... Both, as I've said, very, very quick, you know, it's not going to be easy to force either of them into a particularly big error that will really open up an opportunity for myself. But coming up now into towards turn one, though, Balkit does seem to have a decent run, and then he gets up into fifth gear and races there, just really does have the the legs right at the very end of the straights here. Tuning is allowed for this series. I know quite a lot of people have gone from very, very different tune ideas. Uh, I noticed, obviously, with the telemetry from this. Uh, races have gone with a 6-speed, Balkit have gone with a 5-speed, I have personally gone with a 4-speed because, you know, I think the best era of gearboxes was Le Mans in the 1960s, is what I'm going to go for overall that as well. But yeah, we were still hanging on though in P4 at this stage of the race and we're sort of just looking at the battle going on in front of me, you know, it was it was a lot more just trying to keep up with these guys at this stage of the day. Balkit almost thinks about sending it up the inside of races there and also he's doing is bringing me right now in to this battle here as you can see as we come through I think this is what lap five I've got no lap count unfortunately for this I don't know what lap we're on at this stage of the day here but yeah we're still now right on the back of Balkit races Roadrunner is starting to make a little bit of a gap just at the front of the field here you know we're trying to hang on with second and 30 you know if I was able to score a podium in this series I would be very very happy you know maybe down the line I might be able to just about sneak one you know, depending on, you know, the reverse grid races. Most likely, you know, I can't imagine I'm going to be able to score one just on raw pace, though. But, you know, I am really looking to try and focus on this series a fair bit over the coming weeks. You know, it does run between now and Christmas as well, which is obviously quite cool, exciting to see there. But just coming through the kink, though, I made the same mistake Wolf had made so many times in this race so far. They luckily get away with it, though. I must say, that time around, I got very, very lucky that I didn't get completely murdered by uh, that one there. But yeah, Aerox Chris was, you know, hanging between myself and Wolves at this stage of the race. And unfortunately, that little mistake there really just put pay to me being able to keep up with Racers, Roadrunner, and Balkit here. I sort of felt at this stage of the day, you know, Balkit and, uh, sorry, Racers and Roadrunner, they're probably, you know, pretty much equal in terms of raw pace. That Balkit is, you know, is right there with them as well. But, you know, ultimately, I think once they shifted into their pace order, I don't think any of them really sort of wanted to hassle each other at this stage of the day, which unfortunately left for me I was going to be a little bit further down, you know, wasn't able to quite keep up with them at this stage of the day though as well, which is a little bit frustrating, but obviously that just comes with practice and motivation on this game as well, which is obviously really, really important, you know, obviously, it, it, it just, yeah, Forza is one of those games where the more you play, well, like every game ever, the more you play, the more, the better you get, but it's one of those games where you either, for 99% of people, you either play Forza or you play other stuff, I seem to be... I'm not even joking when I say this. I seem to be one of the only people that sort of makes the transition between the pair of them, which is obviously really quite weird as well. You know, it surprises me with how popular both are. There is very little overlap in terms of, you know, competitive players. Honestly, I think the only other person I can think of that's really ever played both is GCR Hayasa. And I know he was in this race as well. He was a little bit further down the order. I raced him back. Uh, honestly, I've, he's probably been like the one guy I've raced the most across so many different series. I've raced him on Forza. I was in the same ALR F2 split as him in Season 14. Uh, I've, I've raced him pretty much everywhere, you know, pretty much every league under the sun on Forza, especially, you know, we've always raced with each other quite well. You know, AOR as well, he's been right there since, pretty, basically, I think, since not quite when I started league racing, but not long after that as well. That's obviously quite nice to see him. You know, every once in a while when I do see him around in races, you know, it is always quite funny to see him back again because usually we're, we're pretty evenly matched wherever we go which is obviously quite exciting and fun as well. We're coming through the kink now one more time here in this race and this time round I'm going to get it absolutely horrifically there. You can see me just up the road there. Sorry, the Balkit making a mistake and for me unfortunately lack of muscle memory there. Just scrub the car down the wall. I don't want to get a sim twitch. I'd much rather just run it down the wall. Damage is turned off for this as well obviously with the new bug 
that seems to have appeared now. With, rather than the car just, you know, getting a bit unsettled on it now, decides to just break instead, which is a bit frustrating there. But yeah, Chris gets back past me. Wolf's now is trying to have a look past me as well here through the final couple of corners. He tries to make the switch back move one. Just coming through in towards the final corner though. We're a little bit later on the brakes with the inside line. Then we try to hang out to drive. We almost get stuck on each other through the final corner there. But I would hold on just ahead of Wolves at this stage as well. Here yeah, two laps to go now, I think, of this race, if I'm not mistaken here. HCR Hamish as well. Trying to get involved in this battle between myself and Wolves here in towards Turn 1. Is he going to be able to make anything work here? He's trying to look down the inside of Wolves. Not a place I'd recommend trying to look down the inside because, as you can see here, clips the wheel on the grass and completely ruins his run on the exit of the corner there. So not ideal for him there. But Wolves is still all over my rear end here as he now come down in towards Turn 3 of the third last lap of this race. I do get ever so slightly better traction of the exit of the corner here. Now we're going to see the difference between my 4-speed and Wolf's is 5-speed gearbox here. You can see basically nothing overall in terms of difference. There'll be a couple of little places where I get the extra power. Ultimately, for me, I ran with the 4-speed because it, uh, uh, well, I hadn't been able to do any practice on the 5-speed. That was sort of the main reason. And plus, you know, I felt quite decent with the 4-speed. You know, you could attack turn 1 especially quite nicely with it. And the kink, which sort of worked out quite well for me overall. There was, well, you know, you got the car nicely in the power band as well through a couple of the most critical corners on the lap, so although I was probably lacking a mile an hour or two down the end of the long straights. For me, I was quite happy with the four speed. It certainly felt like I wasn't losing out on too much time overall there as well. It's just running a little bit wide out in towards Carousel here. But yeah, at this stage of the day, though, it was not quite good for myself. You know, we were just trying to hold on at this late stage. You know, just, just focus on, you know, P5 in the very first race for me. Is very, I'd, be, I'd take that home any day of the week, especially with this calibre. Of drivers. Honestly, the aim for me this series is just to try and get through inside the top eight there as soon as I say that Wolves makes yet again another mistake there. Hamish is going to be able to get round his outside uh, through in towards Canada corner here right at the end of the lap. But yeah, for me, honestly, in this series, I just want to make it through the top eight. You know, I would quite like to make the finals at Spa, you know, especially on my return to Forza. It would be quite fun to try and get right at the top of quite a incredible series you know, when you look at the driver talent overall as well. There. But yeah, Hamish, though, going defensive on Wolves on towards this final lap of the race. It is Wolves. Hopefully Wolves is going to be able to get back past. Obviously we, it is obviously a team event as well. I can confirm after the opening two rounds of the series. We are currently sat in P2 overall. Which is quite good for our little meme team. Only behind Aerox Esports at the moment. Which is obviously quite a well known org as well in the UK there. But Wolves thinks we're going for the move up the inside in towards turn 1 there. But Hamish just nicely on the brakes there. Not going to give Wolves an opportunity. Doesn't get the good run. Off the exit of the corner here. Wolf's going to be able to have a look down the inside. Is he going to be able to make it work in towards turn three there? Hamish tries to give him a little bit of a tap on the inside there. A little bit stuck together there. Wolf's runs him out nicely wide there and now moves back up in at 2p6 of this race there. And unfortunately for there, that is going to basically be the last piece of action that we saw in this race. Williams Roadrunner would come through for the race victory overall. The head of racers and Bowkit. Aerox Trace obviously in P4, a very, very quiet race from him but obviously able to capitalize on my mistakes right towards the end of the race as well there so very good job for him as well there with myself as i said in p5 at this late stage of the day we'll probably stay on board just through these final half a lap as well there wolves in p6 and then obviously we had a hamish in p7 Matt 661 i think would come through and i think p13 in the end the m40 got shuffled right down off the start of the race and just couldn't pull his way back through there so very very unfortunate for him in this race as well here. Yeah, on board with races once more as he comes through in towards the final few corners of the race. I think he might be able to have a look past Roadrunner in these final few corners of the opening race of the series here, but I don't think any opportunity is going to open itself up for him. You know, Roadrunner as well is a very, very quick, consistent driver as well. But through the final few corners and to finish off the opening round of the series, it's been a very, very long episode. Thank you very much if you have made it right the way through to the end of this very first race of the series there. But through the final couple of corners there, as I said, Roadrunner would come through for the race victory. A huge, huge thank you all so much for watching this video. Make sure you do like and subscribe if you're new around here as well and you do want to see more league racing content from myself, obviously. This is on my second channel. I also have a main channel with nearly 10,000 subscribers trying to hit that at the moment to make F1 car mode and sort of F1-related content as well. But there we are then, guys. That has been the end of the Delta Online Racing Lamborghini Cup round one hopefully i'll bring you guys footage of the second race at road america in just a couple of days time as well but that has been it from me 
for now. And hopefully, as I said, I'll see you guys next time for a race to Road America.